We're going to begin our calling this morning with a, a text from Psalms 90. <clears throat> this is a psalm of Moses. It's probably good to say every once in a while that <clears throat> the, the psalms were not only written by David. David is commonly called the, uh, the psal- sweet psalmist of Israel, and he did write, I believe, the majority of the psalms. But there's also some psalms written by Asaph and some by Moses and, and perhaps others as well. This psalm, verse 90, <clears throat> is... Uh, uh, writ- written by Moses, I'm very interested in what a man like Moses has to say. Yeah. He spent 40 days on a mountain with God. Yeah. Amen. I think that <clears throat> adds to his credibility. Yeah. <laughs> he was also called the the meekest man in all the earth. Yeah. And so I'm, he's also the, uh, the only person that God ever himself buried. God buried Moses. And this, this uh, rather piques my interest. When a man like this speaks about God, um, what uh, is he going to say? And so here's some of the things that he, that he said. Psalm 90 and verse 16 let thy work appear unto thy children. It's a prayer. Let thy work appear. Now, Moses had seen a lot of God's work. And as uh, we discussed in the Bible class this morning, a, the book of Moses, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, in its entirety is, re, is Moses recounting the works that appeared. But Moses is praying here, let thy work appear. This is a, a desire of a godly, of a godly man Amen. for the people of God. Let thy work appear unto thy, unto thy children. Now, it's, it's not that God has hidden works. As the, one of the apostles said in, in the book of Acts, that these things were not done in a corner. It's not that though God has done some great thing and, and, uh, and hid it from people. The, the fact is that there are, there are things that hide it from people that make it hard or impossible for people to perceive what, what God has done. Let thy works appear unto thy children. This is the, uh, the heart of a true minister of God, <clears throat> is that they want the people to see what God has done. There's... A, a, a prayer also in Ephesians chapter 1 where uh, Paul prays the same thing that Moses did in, in Psalm verse 90, Psalm chapter 90. But Paul prays that, the, that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of, of him. That's the same thing that, that Moses was praying for. Moses wanted the people to see what God had done. Let thy work appear. And Paul had the same heart for the people of God that, that Moses did. They were, both, they were both ministers that God gave to the people. And so Paul prayed that God would, he desired, every, every, everyone that Paul ministered to, he had these godly yearnings for, for, for the people. It wasn't just a matter of conforming with, with Paul's preferences. That, that wasn't what, Paul, what drove Paul. It was, a, it was a godly desire. In fact, to such an extent that, that Paul said this at one point, he says he, he longed after them in the bowels of Jesus Christ. So, in other words, whatever, whatever Jesus was desiring for the people, Paul desired the same thing because of his fellowship with Jesus. But what he prayed for was wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. He prayed that, that the people would see what God is doing. <clears throat> John, the apostle, had this same desire. where He said in chapter 5, of verse, verse 13 of his first epistle, he said that you, I've written these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, John spoke a lot about this, about them knowing. He said, we know because you know. He had a lot to say about, he, this is like a, uh, like a preferred word that John uses, the word know. Yeah. And we know. So he desired that the people he was writing to, and the, the reason he wrote this epistle of, of first john is that they may know that they have eternal life that's another way of saying let thy work appear see it's a great vulnerability for the brethren to not know what god has given them 
And so John had this desire for the people that you might know that you have eternal life. You, you got to ask the question of John, you know, is it possible that somebody have eternal life and not know it? Well, John, John obviously thought so. He, I'm writing to you that you, you might know that you have eternal life. I get the idea that John, he was convinced that they had eternal life, but maybe they weren't. Maybe they didn't know. Maybe, or maybe they were distracted. Maybe they were being hindered by something or by someone. That you may know you have eternal life. So John had the same heart as Moses did too. For the people of God to see, to perceive, and to understand. Jesus exemplified this same spirit in Revelation chapter 3, the, verse 18, in the letter to the church at Laodicea, is where he counseled them to buy of him gold and raiment, and also, buy of me eye salve to anoint your eyes that you may see. That's, a, that's the same spirit. It says that, uh, it, it's one thing to identify uh, the pro- a problem that that may exist in, in a church or in, in brethren. Uh, it's another thing to be able to say, I can give you eye salve that you see. He's not only did he, did he identify that they were, that they were blind. He also is a, was able to, and did give them eye salve that, that they might see that the, that the work would appear yeah. that thy work may appear unto thy children. So it's no wonder that, uh, as Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, the, the God of this world, his labors are to blind the minds of them which believe not. The heart of the servant of God is toward the people that they might, that thy work might appear. And uh, to contrast, the activity of the wicked one is to blind the minds of them which believe not. And so, largely, this, this world is, is, an, is an environment where uh, the, these two influences are constantly uh, clashing. Labors to make people see, labors to make people blind. Yes. Yeah. And perhaps all of the activities of, the, of this earth and of the, or of this life could be categorized under those two, those two headings. The, the ministers of God laboring to make thy work appear, and the ministers or the servants of the wicked one laboring to make men blind. So where his, where his work does appear unto men, as Moses prayed, then the, the bonds or the bands of lies and deceit are loosened. Where men begin to see what God has done, like he spoiled principalities and powers in heavenly places. When that work appears to men, well then the power that those influences hold over men they, they begin to, yeah. to, 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 to break down. They begin to dissipate. Yeah. They, begin, they begin to loosen. It's just like the, the grave clothes that uh, were on Lazarus. Though he was alive, he, was, he was, came, came out of the grave, but Jesus instructed those around him, loose him and, and let him go. Yeah. Well, that, that's, what, that's what happens to men. As they, as they see his work appear, mm-hmm. then the, what, was, what bound them, begins to, to loosen, and they begin to, it begins to unravel like, like Lazarus's g- grave clothes uh, did. Another way of saying this is that when the work of God appears, then the, the darkness of ignorance uh, begins to break like the, like the breaking of dawn in the morning. As the sun uh, arises and crests over the, over the horizon, then it actually, the presence of light dissipates darkness. And when his work appears, it's, it's like, the, like Peter said, the day star dawning and arising in your hearts. As his work appears, it's, it's like cresting the, uh, the horizon. And where, where the sun is shining, darkness can't stay. So the darkness flees, and with it, the, the, uh, the ignorance flees. And the, 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 uh, the, the bonds that come, that come with the, the ignorance and darkness, they, they, have to, they have to go as well. Men are compelled by seeing what God has done. What, what was the difference between Saul of Tarsus and Paul the Apostle? Well, chiefly, he saw what God had done. So men are compelled. God draws men by revelation. The law, kind of the mode of the law is, is moving men by, uh, by compulsion, 
by, by re- requirement, by threats. If you don't, this do and live. And, if it, and there's always the looming, the looming curses of those who don't, don't obey. But a more excellent way, as the apostle said, is that men, men are drawn to God by the revelation of God. Mm-hmm. When men see it. In other words, when his work appears, then men are drawn, men are compelled by that revelation. Jesus said in the high priestly prayer of John 17, he says, I have, I have manifested thy word. Unto, the, unto these people, uh, particularly unto the apostles. And because of that manifestation, he, when he manifested his word, that's another way of saying let thy work appear, he manifested his word. Well, Peter concluded, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word. See, Peter was compelled. He was drawn. When his work appeared, then his heart was drawn and his heart was, was fixed. Men, he makes, the Lord also makes men laborers together with him by making his works appear. When men see what God is doing, they are enabled then to put their hands to the plow and labor together with God in what he, in what he is doing. A profitable servant is an understanding servant. So in our assembly this morning, I want to encourage you that this is a time where we, we all have this desire to, that, the work, that his work would appear. We all know, we've tasted of, of the, the fruit of, of his work appearing, and it's good. We, we know that his, when his work appears, you can, you, can, you can run swiftly when his work has appeared, when you can see it. You can labor with great purpose of heart and with great determination when his work has, has appeared. When his work is, is, uh, it is obscured and hard to see because of the, the haze of the world, that it, it, makes, it makes everything in the life of faith more, that much heavier and that much more tedious and that much, that much harder to, to, uh, to grasp and to hold on to. And so in our assembly, uh, this is one of the chief reasons that we meet, is that his work may appear. And it's not always about seeing something that we've never seen before, although that happens too. But it's, it might be that it appears again. Like David said, they, he said it once and I heard it twice. So see, it can appear again. We're, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. And the earthen vessel, see, it, there, there's a, there is a porous nature to an earthen vessel where things, it, 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 things that have already appeared to you could, could get, a, get away, not because you despise them, but because you're in an earthen vessel, not because you wanted to forget, but because we're in a world that lies, completely lies in wickedness, and there's distractions everywhere. So in the assembly, it can appear again. Amen. And, and I, I, I think that the second time it appears, see, it appears brighter. When you, when you see it again. So I'm grateful for, uh, for Moses' desire and for him to, to make this prayer, to write it down. Let thy work appear. And then Paul picked up that same, that same burden and carried it on, and, and along with J, uh, uh, John and, and Peter and, and Jesus. And this is, this is like a kingdom burden. Let thy work appear. Let's pray as we open up. Father in heaven, we thank you for these words. We thank you that you have indeed, as Moses prayed, Uh, made your work appear to us. And we confess to you and to one another and to the angels that we love what has appeared. We pray, Lord, that you would give us grace, give us light uh, to see more of what you have done, that it would appear uh, greater and larger in our perception and in our understanding. We pray for our assembly this morning to that end, that we would have a greater understanding and a a more firm uh, grasp and hold on the things that you have made appear to us. In Jesus' name, amen.